Good morning and good day to you all. Welcome to the ninth South South Forum on Sustainability. The theme is the collapse of modern civilization and the future of humanity. Today, we have the panel on modernization in East Asia, where from and where to. We would like to thank today's interpreters. The English Chinese interpreters are Huang Xiaomei and Li Menghong. English Spanish interpreters are Julieta Mendez and Melissa Ruffini. We are particularly grateful to Julieta and Melissa. It is four o'clock in the morning in Argentina now. We also thank our Chinese interpreters for always interpreting until midnight. Today, it is easier for them. We thank the interpreters not only for their professionalism, but also for their passion and devotion and sharing with us in our efforts for a better world. And my name is Lao Kin Chi. I am currently coordinator of the program on cultures of sustainability, Center for Cultural Research and Development of Lingnan University. I am also director of the executive team of the Global University for Sustainability. May I first introduce the moderator for today's session. Uh, Professor Lee Jong Oak is Emeritus a Professor of Daegu Catholic University, South Korea. She previously served as Minister of Gender Equality and Family under President Moon Jae-in from 2019 to 2020. She is a Senior Advisor and Ex-President of the Korean Association of NGO Studies. She was the co-chair of Gender Equality Committee of Ministry of National Defense, co-president of Women's Forum for Peace and Diplom Diplomacy, and chair of International Cooperation Committee of Korea Democracy Foundation. She is a former member and chair of public interest activity promotion of the Seoul Metropolitan Government. So thank you very much. And now over to you, Professor Lee. Thank you, Lao Kinchi. Good morning and afternoon and good evening. Again, it is great honor to be part of a ninth South South Forum on sustainability with a special theme of modern civilization and the future of humanity. I want to give my double deep respect to organizers, especially Professor Lao Kinchi and Margaret both of whom I have been acquainted with uh, since 1993 under the umbrella of ARENA, Asia Regional Exchanges for New Alternatives. During 90s, ARENA fellows who have uh, professed to be organic intellectuals had searched for the specific, specific, specification of abstract concepts such as Asianis and alternatives. I thought the South South Forum on Sustainability has extended the, the Asianists into South and focused on sustainability among alternatives. Those passionate debate and exchanges among ARENA fellows have constructed the intellectual community, which was integrated into global university. Those voices which cannot be heard anymore, such as Professor Kinida Mushakozi, Binod Laina, and the former Arena Fellows might be still echoed in this special occasion of Ninth South South Forum also. I dare not to moderate in this heavy and meaningful session on modernization in East Asia, where from and where to. All the content will be filled by distinguished speakers such as Muto Ichio from Japan, Samuel Lee from Korea, Suruchai Ungeo from Thailand, Sungo from China, with the big support of participant engagement. Each speaker can take around 30 minutes because of a translator's burden. We are trying to finalize this session within three hours. First, I will introduce Muto Ichio. Muto Ichio, born in 31 in Tokyo. He is a writer on political social affairs, an activist uh, organized in anti-war movement and other social movement also since 50s. 
active in anti-Vietnam War Bahadian movement from 65 to 74, inaugurated the English magazine Ampo 69, founded the Pacific Asia Resource Center in 73, and played a leading role in organizing People's Plan 21 program from 89 to 2002 and founded the People's Plan Study Group in Tokyo in 1998. Taught at the State University of New York in Binghamton from 83 through 2000. He is the author of many books, including Fukushima and the Japanese Potential Nuclear Armament in 2011, particularly translated into English and Chinese. I cannot wrap up all of his activities. He will share again his point of view on our theme. Uh, so I, 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 my, I will give my floor to Buto, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John Nook. And thank you, Kinchi, particularly. And of course, Margaret. Um, it's a great honor to me, uh, the occasion to speak uh, to our old friends and new friends about this very important topic. Um, this is a very big question. And uh, I, I was wondering how I can handle it. Um, modernization in East Asia, where from and where to? <laughs> uh, well, uh, where from is relatively easier to discuss, but where to is very difficult to tell. Uh, but uh, uh, in order to answer the two important questions, the most important thing for us is where we are now. Without knowing where we are now, we can't look back on the past, can't plan the future. Well, where from? Um, the topic is in East Asia, but what is East Asia? And that is a big question also. Uh, long ago, no, 10 years or so ago, uh, three friends of ours, uh, Sunga uh, and Pek from uh, uh, Korea, and Chen Kwon-sin from Taiwan met and discussed. This is a very good book and this is a very interesting discussion and perhaps Songa remember this. Uh, very profound discussion about what is East Asia? What is Asia? Um, so I can't go into it. Uh, I just uh, use uh, a very how can I say, journalistic uh, uh, notion of East Asia. Uh, I have to, uh, but I, 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 Suricha is there from Thailand and Thailand doesn't belong to East Asia. It, it's part of Southeast Asia. And, and so uh, my, my, Intervention is a little bit, uh, how can I say, shaky and not, uh, not well grounded. Uh, but anyway, I, I'll go, go ahead. Uh, of course, uh, if we take uh, East Asia as a sort of very journalistic way, uh, China, Japan, Korea, uh, Still, uh, um, it's not so easy to decipher. Um, but one thing that uh, we have to focus on is China. What is China? Because China is the center of the discourse. 
when we talk about uh, East Asia in, in, in my sense, uh, no need to repeat it. Uh, China heavily matters over history as empire and suzerain power over neighboring countries uh, to different degrees, uh, not so much to Japan, but very heavily for Korea. Um, so the China is, is, is a relevant number one. But when we talk about modernization, uh, Japan, of course, matters. It matters uh, in two ways. Um, as a first Asian country to modernize on the Western model, it is, of course, uh, obvious historical fact. Uh, and military conquests, Japan started almost simultaneously with the start of, of modernization. How come? And the, this, the, the, the war, first Korea, first uh, <clears throat> sending a warship and uh, demanding Korea to open. And that was the beginning of a long chain of uh, <clears throat> invasion, aggression, conquest of neighboring Asian countries. Well, uh, about China uh, and East Asia, uh, we have to, of course, uh, take deeply into account uh, the Chinese characters, uh, kanji. Uh, kanji carries not just uh, symbols of language, but thoughts. So uh, by using Chinese characters, those three regions, Japan and Korea were so deeply involved in the Chinese influence, a theoretical, uh, philosophical, cultural, literary. And it's not just Korea and Japan, but Vietnam. So Vietnam uh, isn't part of Northeast Asia, <laughs> but uh, for instance, uh, in Japanese, uh, Reiba is Rodo and uh, Rodo in, in Korea and uh, Rodo in, in, in Vietnamese. We, we, we share the, the same origin of uh, such basic concepts. Um, well, uh, so uh, are we sort of China's tributaries? No. What happened happened as, uh, as part of modernization of us, uh, Japan, China, Korea, and modernization took place in different ways. And modernization in this case is the uh, influence of basic profound influence from the West, Europe and America. I think uh, uh, modernization processes uh, took uh, uh, different forms and, and they, they, they traced uh, different paths. Um, very, uh, to simplify very much, in China, modernization took place as resistance and revolutions. Uh, Japan, modernization took place through Japan becoming imperialism, imperialism aspiring 
entity through what Gramsci called passive revolution of Meiji. Um, it was Meiji change was a really profound change. Uh, nowadays, uh, historians uh, tend to so minimize the uh, role of uh, Meiji <coughs> reform, uh, saying that uh, Tokugawa shogunate would have done it better. But I don't think so. It's, uh, the, the change was very profound. Uh, but that change directly led to overseas expansion. Um, Korea. This is a very delicate topic. And uh, uh, when I use that term, uh, I usually have strong objections from young Koreans, uh, including students in America. Uh, modernization under colonial rule. Uh, that's a distorted modernization yet modernization nonetheless. Um, well, uh, what about broader Asia, including Southeast Asia, uh, India, and other countries? I think historically, As Asia is a product of the West. The term Asia was not created and used by Asians. It was uh, used uh, to point to Asia Minor, for instance. Uh, but uh, and I, I wrote uh, <clears throat> some years ago, 10 years ago, I wrote uh, uh, an article uh, in uh, Inter-Asia Cultural Studies, Asia, Inter-Asia and Movement, Decolonization into the Future. That was the topic. And I discussed it uh, quite uh, sort of uh, somewhat in detail. Um, and Sunga, uh, long ago, uh, in the first issue of that journal, I wrote a very uh, new and, uh, and challenging article about the, the, the term Asia uh, coming as a result of uh, Japanese expansion uh, to subjugate countries now called Asian countries. Um, then should we abandon Asia? Because we didn't make it. We didn't call ourselves Asians first. They did. I think we can call ourselves ourselves Asians because of Bandun conference in 55. Um, you, you immediately understand what I mean. I am going into detail. 10 principles uh, which, were, which were adopted by, by Bandun, adopted and decreed. That, that was an Asian African conference, not just Asia. But uh, that was preceded by uh, Nehru Choyenrai uh, meeting in, 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 in Delhi, uh, which produced uh, five principles. Principles governing relations between countries and nations in the post-World War II. I think that was the first time that non-West peoples adopted a resounding declaration 
giving rules and principles that would govern international relations all over the world. Such proposition used to come only from the West. Now, Asians, Africans said that the world should be like this. You must follow those principles. I think uh, that was uh, the, the moment of birth of Asia and Africa as not as a result of naming by the West, but the declaration of their name as Asia and Africa. Um, so I'm very positive about Asia, although uh, not without reservations, uh, there are many, many reservations yet. Uh, we should see the positive side. We shouldn't renounce Asia. But what is it? <laughs> that is a very, very difficult question to answer. I've just read uh, Sundar's uh, In Search of the Asian Principle, which I, I appreciate very highly. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting book, uh, uh, discussion and, and has cross bear bearings uh, on uh, what I want to say. Uh, but uh, after Bandun, what happened? I think uh, 1965 was a, was a turning point. It was a watershed. Uh, defeat of Asia as independent entity. Um, Indonesia. September 30 incident. This is a very, very incredibly brutal. It's a carnage of hundreds of thousands of people. And that stopped the advance, the, 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 the sort of atmosphere of, of, uh, of liberation and sort of let's go ahead kind of uh, sort of spirit. Um, and in the same year, the Vietnam War started. America beginning to bomb North Vietnam. And in the same year, the Asian Development Bank started with the Japanese president. So that was a turning point. And then uh, uh, this trend uh, continues in terms of economy. Uh, it's the long aspired after model of uh, autonomous national economy, that dream was gone. And <clears throat> Korea, Japan, Republic of Korea and Japan negotiation, uh, America forced Korea to succumb to the Japanese demand of not negating the authenticity of the annexation. So the, that still rings us on. That, that, that's not just a, a moment, the matter of uh, 65, but it's a current issue. 
So this kind of uh, pressure was there. But uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, the whole period uh, is characterized as, uh, well, as the period of Cold War. And the Cold War lasted for, for, for half a century. And uh, uh, there, America and the Soviet Union, and China was totally excluded uh, from, from the, the formal confrontation. Uh, competed. They, they were enemy to each other. But that time, I think it's a very interesting uh, situation, the Cold War situation, where America wanted to carry out its ideal, freedom, etc., etc., et against communism, against communism. And the communists or the Soviet Union upheld its cause. That is socialist revolution, national liberation, etc. So it's a, it's for social change anyway. Uh, I'm not I, idealizing the Soviet Union. No, that's a different matter. But the nature of confrontation involved universal principles. On what principle the world should be organized. That was the, 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 the problem. That was the issue. And actually, uh, what happened was that in the two empires, the Soviet Empire and the American Empire, revolt occurred from below uh, in the Soviet area, Poland, Hungary. In the American area, constant rebellion against the American rule, especially in, in Central America. And so that was the, the crash between two principles about how the whole world should be organized. And in that, the, the, the contest, America won. So the period of America, the, the American empire all over, that was the development from the 1990s. Now, where we are, China became a big country. And that and everybody talk about US-China hegemonic rival. But what is it? How different is it from the Cold War confrontation? The Cold War confrontation involved principle whereby the world, the whole world should be organized. The Soviet Union was defeated and it's gone as an empire, as, an, as a country. America won and capitalism won. The cap capitalism embraced the whole world. There's no socialism, no principled opposition to it. Yet we have struggle at the top between two giants. So I think uh, uh, the era of American hegemony, of course, is gone. America 
Dou Longa thinks that it can organize the whole world on the basis of its sort of doctrine. It, it became clear when Trump declared America first. The rest of the world, you take care of yourself. We take care only of ourselves. That was the declaration. And so that was abandonment of hegemony. Hegemony means not just strength. Hegemony means the power of persuasion. You have to have some certain basic principles, logic, culture, you know, to persuade more or less most of the people, most of the countries. During the Cold War period, the Soviet side had that logic. America also, freedom, kind of. Now, that, the, the, the confrontation, the nature of, of confrontation is so different. China is getting strong and is uh, an empire now. And uh, uh, the, 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 the goal is very clearly declared. That is to, 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 to get back the old empire. That is the implication of what is said. Okay. But if we agree with China, what kind of world we can expect? Not just China, but our Americans. What kind of world they can expect if China was a real hegemonic country? No answer. To me, I can't see any kind of universal principle whereby the world should be reorganized. Well, America, of, of course, was a failure, uh, totally failed. Uh, it, it says something uh, universal, but uh, that has no persuasion and no, no power of persuasion. It's just an excuse. So the, the, the point is, um, we need, in, in, in Gramscian term, new prince. There's no prince. Who are going to be new prince? We don't know. But at least what is happening is happening when the civilization itself is in peril. The future of humanity is questioned then people who really are concerned with the totality of the situation should have, say something universal. And people's movements first sh should be that body. I think that is the most crucial point. So that requires coalition of the people and alliance of people that can dictate new order to the rulers who are not concerned with, 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 with the, the, the good of, of the totality. I think uh, uh, this, I call this uh, an era of empires but those empires have no capacity to be really hegemonic. So uh, people's hegemony is required. And the era of empires is also a new period where states 
uh, somewhat resuscitated. So the states have new role to play. That is to form a certain coalition, new non-alignment as our African friends propose. And I think there is space for that. And time is up, exactly 35 minutes. And so I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Muto-san. We can, thanks to your very uh, detailed and uh, the kind guide, we can see uh, from where, and also we can see the where to. Uh, so for all the, um, based on your own experience, so this, this kind of a new confrontation, so there, there, is, kind, there is a kind of a, uh, some chasms and some autonomous uh, sphere, we or peoples can intervene. So it is a kind of a constructing the hope in our two pair modernization discourse. So thank you for all your endeavors. Now I will invite the second speaker, Samuel Lee. Uh, I will introduce uh, Samuel Lee, he is an, uh, currently executive chairperson of uh, Korea Dialogue Academy. He studied philosophy uh, and the social science uh, at the Seoul National University and uh, Göttingen University in Germany. He was former professor of Sungshil University. He served as a secretary general of Korean National Commission for UNESCO and as director of Asia Pacific Center of Education for International Understanding under the auspice of UNESCO. He was involved in various activities of civil society organizations like People Solidarity for Participating Democracy, Eco Peace Asia, History NGO Forum, Unification Committee of KNCC. So, so we can share his experience and wisdom. Now the floor is yours, Samuel Lee. Uh, I am very delighted uh, to have this opportunity to speak and uh, discuss with our longtime uh, fellows of ARENA, uh, respectful Muto Ichiyo-san, and uh, my old friend, Sri Chai Bungeo, uh, and also Professor Sun Ge in this precious South South Forum on uh, Sustainability. I want to say uh, my deep thanks to Professor Lau Kinji for facilitating and organizing this marvelous months long forum and webinar where we can listen and see world's prominent speakers and important thinkers and activists directly and learn very valuable knowledges and up-to-date informations of different areas and region. So I'm very uh, privileged uh, to be invited to participate in this wonderful forum and today also very honored to be one of the speakers in the session of modernization problems. Mm. I would like to also express my hearty condolence uh, and deep respect to our common mentor and teacher, Mushakoji Kinhaide, who just passed away uh, a month or two. Uh, who has been long time leader of civil society movement in Asia and uh, dedicated all his life to work for the just and peaceful world 
and human rights of the alienated people. I can never forget his persistent and earnest effort and contribution to improve the peaceful relation between Japan and Korea, and also for the reconciliation between North and South Korean people, which has been the great task for the peaceful Northeast Asia. We just heard very significant presentation of Muto-san on our topic, modernization in East Asia. I want to express my deep appreciation to him also for his very impressive and insightful paper, Inter-Asia Inter Movement, Decolonization into the Future, which was sent to me by Lao Kinji and I, which I have read very carefully. <clears throat> Uh, I thought I was expected to give some comments on his paper uh, because he has uh, 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 written very uh, a, a profound uh, 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 points on, on, on this uh, question of uh, civilization and uh, uh, modernization problem. According to my understanding, he has surveyed long history of modernization in Asia and described the general trend and specific characters of Asian countries, including Japan in process of the modernizing development. The crucial point of his observation and reflection on the modernization process in Asia was to find out the way how to overcome the political, economic, even psychological colonization and to go beyond the West on the basis of Asian values and the subjective self-understanding of Asian people. He has emphasized the importance of autogenous and autonomous development in the modernization process. He has even criticized the exogenous element of Japanese modernization process, which shows ruthlessness, lacking the integrity of resistance. Most Asian countries have fought for the national independence from Western colonial rule and acquired modern nation state against imperialistic dominations. Many countries, of course, have thrown away the military dictatorship or developmental dictatorship and brought about the liberal democratic countries now. However, people are still very much suffering from poverty and discrimination and exploitation as they are continuously under the control of neo-colonial economic, social domination. So the task for the future of humanity is to achieve decolonization and the desirable modernization that meets the needs and hopes of people of Asia. I think Muto-san has challenged us through this paper first, to ask ourselves whether we are now satisfied with or proud of the present result of the modernization which our countries have achieved until now. 
And secondly, to find out what was the success and what was the failure of our modernization and with what reasons. And thirdly, and also to reflect on the way how to correct the course of development and how to realize the autonomous and decolonized modernization, which could fulfill the people's expectations. These are the tremendous tasks, of course, but I think it's very significant and serious challenges, especially in this era of civilizational crisis and ecological and climate emergencies. As the concept of modernization and development is so broad and complex and the historical stages and context of development are very different from country to country, it is very difficult to generalize the process and goals of modernization in Asia or even in East Asia. I remember the political and academic discussions and debates on the problem of modernization in Korea have started early in 1960s when the military government of Park Chung-hee brought the economic development plan projects with the propaganda Fatherland's modernization. I remember exactly because it, when it was when I was a college student. So we also discussed a lot in, in, our, in our college classes. Modernization was understood at that time as the economic, social, and cultural development process from the traditional agricultural society up to the modern industrial country of Western style. Of course, there happened hard controversial arguments and debates among Korean social scientists and historians on the issue of first initiation, when actually the seeds and but of modernization started to grow. Some said from the Japanese colonial times, and others opposed that and uh, argued already later Joseon dynasty has brought that bud and seeds. Or well, some people said, when the Western missionaries have brought modern educational and medical system into Korea. It is true that Japanese colonial government since 1910 carried on some modern development projects like railway train, electric generations, urban industrial, uh, Constructions. I heard just uh, Muto Sang has uh, also uh, claimed some some part of this uh, 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 modernization process in the Japanese colonial time. I, I think. Uh, but the opposite argument is that those modern projects of Japan, Japanese colonial time were just tools of exploitation and objects, objects of colonial dominations. Not for the development of Korean society and benefit of Korean people. So since the liberation of Japanese colonial denomination, 
Domination, Domination, 1945, the development goal and direction was to liquidate the legacy of Japanese colonialism and traditional feudalism and to establish the liberal democratic modern rational society following Western model under the strong influence of US America. So the concept of modernization was at the time identical with the Westernizations. And the modernization process in Korea has been carried out with the great American aids and guidance. So policy and direction of economic development was decided mostly by the American advisors. The most influential advisor was the MIT professor, Walt Rostow, who wrote the famous book, The Stages of Economic Growth, in which five stages of capitalistic development process were described and explained. So this book was like a textbook for Korean modernization at the time. So Rostow was a strong anti-communist and against the Marxistic theory of economic development. Five stages of development were first traditional society, second precedent conditions of development to start and third, takeoff start, and fourth, major stage, and fifth, last, high level mass consumption. So this process of development stages were followed very uh, sincerely by the Korean politician and economic uh, uh, and police politicians. Anyhow, the way of capitalistic development with the foreign aids and investment has been practiced under the dictatorial government of Park Chung hee for 18 years. Though Park dictatorship has collapsed in 1979, another military dictator, Chen Duhan, continued the same way of economic development and industrialization. Even democratized government since 1987 could not change much the capitalistic development policy except some improvement, improvement of labor rights and uh, distribution policy. So South Korea has been very proud that rapid economic growth has been successfully accomplished through high speed industrialization and increase of ex export industries and world market. So statistic shows the per capita income in the early 1960s were less than $100 per person. But 20 years later in 1980s, it amounted $10,000, which means 100 times growth. In 2020, two years ago, it reached $30,000, which means 300 times increase within last half century. 
as Muto Sang pointed out, Korea is lauded for its successful rise in the global capitalist system. And many, and many Korean people are fascinated by triumphant sentiment and satisfied with high level technological development and ultra modern export industries. So this is the very positive side of modernization in Korea. However, the negative side of this capitalistic development process is to be seen in the tremendous sacrifice of the millions of people, peasants, industrial laborers, unemployed women by the brutal exploitation and the terrible suppression of dictatorial rule. The true and real picture of economic development and capitalist accumulation could be rightly understood when the neo-colonial structure of the economic growth and the neo-imperialistic domination of transnational speculative financial capitals are correctly analyzed and thoroughly grasped. I don't need to tell hundreds and thousands cases of people's sacrifices and the miserable life of those exploited, alienated people, as these phenomena were very common in the developing countries of Asia and Latin America. This cruel exploitation and domination by transnational corporations and financial capitals has been strengthened and deepened structurally through the neoliberal economic globalization and world trade and market system. The typical case of collapse of neoliberal globalization and break bankruptcy of neo-colonial economic system were already shown in 1997 IMF crisis and also 2008 subprime financial crisis of Wall Street. Results were the millions of people fired and sharp polarization of rich and poor people, breakdown of middle class and inflation and high living costs, increase of urban poor and street dwellers. South Korea has been recently upgraded in the international field, not only of economy, but also of culture, art, sport, film, and also K-pop. Korean language is getting more popular and is learned by many young people of Asia and Western countries who are admiring Korean development. However, young people within Korea are now shouting, hell Joseon, which means Korea is like a hell, not worse to live in. Because for example, one apartment house in Seoul center 
costs now two or three million dollars, which the young people can never pay with the total salaries of their whole life. And chance of getting jobs are diminishing every year, seriously. So they laugh at themselves as they call themselves as generation of three kinds of abandonment, giving up. These three kinds of abandonment were job, housing, and marriage. So where is the hope for the young people in this modernization process? Some, some young people even say that five kinds of uh, abandonment life, even education or childbirth, etc. So according to international statistic, South Korea shows now the lowest birth rate among the OECD countries, 0.78%, which means population is quickly decreasing. And also statistics shows the highest rate of suicide of the young people and also old people among the OECD countries. I have read a statistic in Korea. In 2020, the total number of suicide people in the hospital records were 22,572 persons in a year, in the year 2020. And the number of young people who made suicide, those uh, ages uh, between 20 and 30s are numbered 9,695 people, which means some 43% of the total number of suicide people. This is very negative and shameful side of the highly successful modernization and economic development. Ecological crisis and climate emergency are also another big problem of Korean civilization. Environmental destructions by air and water pollution and food contamination are threatening seriously the sustainability of natural and human life. It is said this year, we can find no more honeybee in the fields or in the forest or mountains. So millions of fishes are disappearing from the river and sea. This civilization, which cannot guarantee the survival of human life and Earth's life, should be transformed and reconstructed. So the main actor and offender of today's dangerous civilization was the modernization and industrialization last 200 years with mass productions and luxurious cons consumptions, which capitalism has praised and supported and served. So in order to save our civilization from collapse, it is very urgent task to transform the very way and the structure of modernization and capitalistic economic development. However, as we are all incorporated 
in this neoliberal globalization economic system, we cannot overcome and go beyond this war alone in Asia. So the people of Asia have to cooperate to build solidarity and friendship for the decolonization and just autonomous modernization that will serve, secure the sustainable and hopeful life of people. So in this regard, I think what Mutosang has proposed, the inter-Asia movement was very important and promising suggestion. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Samuel Lee. Uh, Samuel Lee has uh, described the, the sunny side of uh, Korean modernization process and also shadowy side also. And uh, he raised a serious question on sustainability of uh, Korean de developmentalism in, in, in describing current situation, especially well, for young generation. So recent pastor of a poet, Kim Ji Ha, who have struggled against uh, dictatorship, he described the white shadow. So the shadow side, but we have some hope that was uh, his terminology. So I will introduce his endeavor also. So thank you, Samuel Lee, for your very detailed and uh, very succinct description on Korean modernization from where and uh, to where. So now I introduce uh, Professor Surichai Ungeo. Uh, is he here? Or? No, uh, he is still uh, going, trying to look for a hotel with a Wi-Fi. <laughs> he is in a village in Thailand. <laughs> So we will change the order, and uh, now I will invite Professor Sungo. So, so are you ready? So Professor Sungo, I will introduce. Uh, uh, I will inter introduce Professor Sungo. Professor Sungo obtained a PhD in politics uh, at the Faculty of Law, Tokyo Metropolitan University and professor at the Institute of Literary Studies, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Her research focuses on Japanese intellectual history and many monographs include In Search of Metrics of History 2016, Why Do We Need to Talk About East Asia 2011, Grasp the Moment When We Enter the History 2010, Takeuchi Yoshimi's Paradox to 2005, The Space Where the Subject Deserves 2002, What Does Asia need, Mean to 2001? So he has searched about the, the Asianism and the Asian University and the specificity uh, for a long time. So, so the flower is Professor Sunga. It's a great honor that we can be here to discuss with several several teachers that I have always respected. And it's such an important topic also. Earlier, Muto Ichiyo and, and Samuel Lee, I think what they have talked about is on two men topics and these two topics are also in are also related to each other one is about modernization and what modernization what modernization means to the civilization and people's spiritual life the second topic is about uh, asia and east asia these two domains, how these two domains are formed in history and its potential uh, is and what what it, the potential that it included. So these two topics I think are very important and 
they are very big issues. These two teacher, the two te um, teachers already pointed out that this is a, pro a topic that we cannot like easily clarif clarify because there are two groups of questions. I myself, from the uh, 90s, I have started to pay attention, focus on the Asia, the prob problematic of Asia. And this concern, of course, is started from a very simple point of start. Just like what Muto Ichio has pointed out, that what is Asia? I myself also have this question because in our discussion, a concept has to is correspondent border. It needs to have its own, 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 own appearance so that we can use it. But Asia, this domain has a very, very big characteristic that its border is not clear. But in reality, in the social movements, in the uh, idea, in in the in the knowledge producing process, we have used a lot. We have used this domain that is not very clear. We have used it quite often, including Asia and East Asia. So I have been thinking, this domains, how can we? I can, is it possible to clarify its border? So this is my start, the point of start for me to think about when it comes to Asia. For such a long time, two years ago, I published, or should I say three years, I, 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 I published a book. The title is Looking for Asia or In Search of Asia. And it included the article that Muto Ichio has, has, uh, has kindly presented. Actually, this topic is after a long time of thinking, because I think Asia as a domain of geography, it has to be an entity. So Asia cannot be just a symbol, same as for East Asia. But at the same time, we can see this phenomenon that East Asia and Asia are kind of inter interchangeable. When we talk about East Asia, as if we are talking about the whole Asia. And earlier, Muto Ichiyo has also pointed out this, this, this problem, this question, because when it comes to A East Asia, we actually included in South Asia, and nobody is going to question about that. Nobody is going to say that this is not accurate because we all know what we are talking about. What we're talking about is Asia as a concept, although it come, it is uh, it is one that is the, is the West that wants to prove is supremacy, so they create this other. And this other itself has included lots of questions and and implications, which are not important to the West, because for them, they only needed this, this other, which is different from, from themselves, different from the Western culture, and also inferior to the West. The need, this other needs to survive under the guidance of the West. But just as uh, just as Muto Ichiyo and uh, somebody has pointed have pointed out, the concept of Asia, when Asian in the 20s, when they already find their subjectivity and, and emerge in the world stage, Asia has become the subject for the Asian. And this is an outcome of the history. So we can say we Asian, we is Asian and we don't, mind that in the beginning who created this concept that's because this included 
a, a, a historical mission, which is Asia need to Asia need to transcend the domain that given by the West. So, and also it even needs to transcend, trans, transcend the world order given by the West. Under such, from this starting point, I would like to extend a little bit further. So, but then I encounter a problem, a, quite a trouble, because when we say Asia, when we say Asia wants to liberate from the hegemony of the West, then Asia need to, when, when we say Asia wants to, wants to transcend, transcend the West, where is Asia? Is the Asia where we are at, at this moment? If you think about it, from the 20th century, the Asian have this awakening self-consciousness. Then it's no longer outside the West. The West is already inside the Asia. This West, of course, we are told, we are referring to the West Europe and the North America. So under this premise, when we talk about that we want to transcend the West, then we can no longer just imagine that there is such this entity of West, of the Asia that is outside the West and that we are trying to fight against the West and, and, and fight, fight back. So in this sense, we have to rethink what is Asia, especially to us. What does it mean? In one conference, I came up with uh, the, 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 the concept of looking for Asia or in search of Asia. And immediately I received lots of other intellectuals uh, comments. They're saying that, why are you looking for Asia? Is Asia lost? I think, yes, Asia is lost. So we have to look for it because we, what we imagine, why we imagine that Asia as an entity it doesn't exist. Okay, so in these circumstances, how can we find, how can we find such an Asia? This is also a topic that I've been looking, I've been searching, I've been doing research on from history, in history, especially uh, from the reality of today. Actually, Asia or East Asia both have two basic uh, char two, two characteristics. First, it's not self-sufficient, which means there's no such uh, there's no such entity that can do self-organization. In Asia, it already included West Europe and North America. In, in Asia, there in Eastern Asia, there is already. That's Europe and North America. In this sense, we say Asia is not self-sufficient. The most typical example is the Korean Peninsula issue. There has always been this six-party conference. It's a system of negotiation where the US and Russia were part of it. The Korean Peninsula is a de facto part of East Asia. So by resolving its issue requires participants from outside of Asia, a Russia, a European country like Russia and a American country like the US as if they were insiders, let alone that there are military, US military bases in Japan and South Korea, and they don't seem to find themselves as guests. So under this situation, they say that they want to challenge Western hegemony. Then, then they 
Brenda's problem, they feel that they're breaking the boundary between the I or we or the other. The other is within us, let alone colonialism in the culture of sex. I wouldn't go to great details as the two previous speakers have talked about this. In fact, all regions of Asia have been colonized by Western powers and they were already internalized. And of course, within this process, there is also self-perfection. It's too complicated, so I won't talk about it here. As for decolonization, in re there is decolonization in, rea in reality or uh, materially, and there is the spiritual decolonization or decolonization within the mind. These are our tasks. So these are the, are the first characteristic of this Asianness. It's not sufficient. The second feature, in my opinion, is that it's impossible to integrate Asia. Because when they say East Asia, they have a relatively vague contour that this Chinese character culture circle. And then Professor Li also just mentioned that even within Eastern Asia, each country has its own stories and its course. And the meaning of modernization is different depending on the situation, on the country. So we cannot discuss all the different issues of modernization of Asia in one single manner. Only within a very, very short historical period, Asia was unified. That's the Bandung Conference period. At that time, Asia became, within this short period, they became independent countries and got rid of colonialization. They were of the same status within this period. And then the countries, when they're separate based, and there, there were divisions and diversion, especially the confrontation caused by the Cold War. And then another reason for this impossibility of unification or integration is that in Europe, there is one single relatively old civilization. But in Asia, there are at least three. And there are multiple various religions in Asia. Against this background, it is impossible for us to transcend these differences within Asia. And it is very difficult to umbrella all these differences in one concept. We have to form a community despite all these differences. Our previous speakers both mentioned the power of the people. Of course, the people is a way for unification, for solidarity. But when we talk about this, if we push this question still more forward, we encounter the problem of diversity because the peoples have their own motherland and they have their own cultures. Under these circumstances, I've always been thinking about one issue. That is this non-self-sufficient, non-integratable nature. Can these be the basis for, for the construction of this Asia concept. When we say that we want to make all these different cultures a community and face the outside world together, our real basis behind this, real theoretical basis behind this is from the West. Our understanding of commonality 
should be abstracted from diversity or multipolarity and find the similarity and do away with the difference and seek common ground. As for social movements, this is of utmost importance. For thinkers, I believe they're also it's also important, but there is one problem. It concerns our understanding of modernization. Why modernization and capitalist globalization take only one basic form, that is the model of the vast and developed countries. When they try to approach questions, problems, that they are approach or common collective unconsciousness have something to do with this. Whether this world becomes one so that the other is relatively stable. Besides, this vast modernization, when it's pushing forward around the world, it follows the same logic. Of course, I do not oppose abstracting similarities from diversity and use a relatively uniform way to analyze this. But my own suggestion would be that this practice would be only the first initial step of working towards commonality or universality. It should not be our eventual target. The eventual goal should come from our Asian history. Asia history has a lot to contribute to human society, which is exactly the two characteristics of features I just talked about. The first is that it's non-self-sufficient because it included many different elements into itself, many others into itself, and it transformed this otherness. It is also very diverse at the same time. It does not require an apparent unification. Through all the different peculiarities, they try to construct a understanding and equal partnership. Through these efforts, diversity can exist in diverse ways. Just then, Mr. Uton just mentioned that in East Asia, especially at least in Northeast Asia, China historically and currently occupies a central position. And he doubts whether China will become a new hegemony. And even when that replaces the US. Wow. It is our common hope that China will not become a hegemony like the US. At least within China's own ideology, they see this possibility. China supports peaceful development. And when China promotes the Belt and Road Initiative, the policy orientation is actually very different from the U.S. extractionist, self-important model. Of course, during this process, China encounters numerous problems. But for us, including all these real realistic de development paths, as for our thoughts about the theories or laws, should be on our agenda. Can we have something where a, a commonality, where the plurality is the final destination? Instead of a commonality unified by this unit, this only one thought, can we just base a system based on our differences where everyone 
enjoys its own development and one that is very pluralistic and diverse. It also involves our decolonization issue. When the other is not without us, but within us, decolonization actually means restructuring ourselves. But this does not mean going back to the past because it's impossible. This construction is to transform the other and make the self more rich, more diverse, more open, yet still with its own subject subjectivity. Our discussion about Asian theories, it's directly connected to modernity or modernness. Today, when we talk about the modernization process of a society, we haven't got rid of this vast capital accumulation industrialization, establishing capitalist regime, and through a, the so-called market economy to establish a society with well-developed te advanced technology and rich material products. We haven't got rid of this imaginary, but actually in history, Every step of this way is accompanied by blood and violence. The difference between the gap between rich and poor has for this issue, Justin Professor Lee talked about the situation in Korea. And as we all know, this assassination of Shinzo Abe, which just occurred in, in Japan, these are bound to happen because of the difference between the rich and poor violence in society. This kind of modernism benefits the 1% make them mega rich and make the rest of the 99% to pay with their all, with all, with all they have for, for the wealth of this 1%. This is not the modern, modernization that we want. Yet, it's still occurring everywhere. In, I mean, in the developing countries, it's still part of our common vision. In terms of an uni way of thinking, it seems that we have this only, this is the only path of modernization. So can we seek an alternative path? This alternative, especially this issue of ecological civilization is on the agenda. We can have more things to do on the so-called periphery. We can discuss this kind of lifestyle. It's just that, ideologically, they cannot become the mainstream. For example, in the, in the northern part of, in northern part of Japan, the Jeju island of Korea, and for continental China, there are also some similar practices, but they haven't just streamlined them uh, into taxed it. So these kind of lifestyle without so without the too well developed technology or modern way of life is this an alternative to modernization, another way of modernization instead of something pre-modern. But our imagination of modernization becomes more diverse this kind of so-called not so well-developed lifestyle may become well-accepted like the so-called typical high consumption, violence among social forms that we imagine as the modernization. They will be a real confrontation between them. 
So my time is up. So, so much for this. Thank you very much. We have struggled on the, the terminology of Asia well, because the, the origin was given by others. So whether we can subjectively use it for ourselves for developing our own alternative future that was uh, asked also and also the terminology of modernization whether how can it be differentiated from the capitalization process capitalistic penetration and industrialization or the democratization so what can modernization purely means by us? So that was also uh, should be discussed. And uh, also many of our speakers uh, uh, commonly uh, put the hope on the inter-peoples uh, dialogue and the more mutual uh, transformation by uh, by the bottom-up process. Uh, so that was the how can we do uh, accomplish those uh, missions uh, to make modernization of our own way, to a more sustainable way. So that was also uh, raised. So those are not uh, 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 easy uh, questions to be answered quickly, but I thought uh, through dialogue, we can deconstruct and reconstruct uh, such a touch issue because uh, especially our East Asians cannot escape. <laughs> so I, I will invite Professor Sri Chai. So I will introduce Professor, uh, after listening to Professor Sri Chai's uh, speaking, so we will continue our dialogue. So I, I will introduce Professor Sri Chai. Uh, he has been director of the Center for Peace and Conflict Studies at the Chilalongkorn University since 2010, and the professor of sociology at the university since 2009. After finishing his uh, postgraduate studies at the University of Tokyo, he has uh, successfully held various academic posts, including directorship of Chilalongkorn University Social Research Institute and uh, visiting professorship at the university, including Hitotsubashi University in Japan, University of Illinois in United States of America, and uh, Humboldt University in Germany. So Professor Ungio is uh, 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 currently an advisor for the working group on legal and the economic and the social measures for sustainable development goals. Uh, Thailand as a commissioner on National Health Commission. Uh, so uh, now the chair of, of UNESCO MOST, Management of Social Transformation Programs. So Professor Chai is now the committee member and vice president of Intergovernmental Council of Most in Asia Pacific region. So uh, my introduction is not enough, so, but I will give my floor to Professor Sri Chai. I thought he just so much in a hurry. <laughs> okay, shall we start? I am now just to inform you uh, in informally but uh, also formally as well because i am now in konkan where uh, ajan banton on dam our common friend is uh, residing uh, i was visiting homeless center here under covid 19 and going after this to see Ajahn Banton, but I, my time, my sense of timing with Hong Kong, uh, it's a very a bit confusing. So that that all this uh, make me uh, uh, in this uh, uh, not not very nice position to speak with all of you. So please allow me. Uh, I was uh, able 
to listen to the latter half of uh, Professor Sunge. Uh, I miss uh, uh, the, the previous uh, esteemed speakers, Muto uh, Sensei and uh, Samuel Lee. Uh, yes, for, for. so anyway, uh, please allow me to join uh, you uh, just to uh, say something from uh, the experience from this part of uh, Asia, uh, that is Thailand. When, when uh, in, uh, maybe I speak about uh, uh, maybe uh, three points to make it short, to make it clear uh, for the time being, three points. The first point related to defining uh, the uh, difficulty in defining Asia uh, uh, and, and uh, how to uh, face this reality in the present context. Second uh, is related to looking at modernization experience and, and uh, modernity from, from our re this sub-region, uh, Thailand and this sub-region, Southeast Asia. Uh, and and uh, my third point related to what, what next? Uh, my third point related to what next? I mean, how can to, uh, we answer the question uh, in, in, in a more healthier, a more uh, uh, mutually uh, interactive and also engaging way uh, so that uh, we uh, can escape, uh, can together uh, be more responsible for, for the planet, for the, the next uh, generation uh, that we have to, uh, before we, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that, that is the, the, the last question. My first point related to Asia, defining Asia, I fully agree that in, we have been learning again and uh, again about uh, Asia uh, have different ways of, of uh, defining, but uh, the, 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 the discussion in the most cases that have dominated uh, the, our, our circ, uh, the broader circles have been uh, a bit self-referential, uh, a bit too much self-referential, uh, but I, I was listening to Professor Sungye in the sense that we, we need to look at this in a, a uh, historical experience uh, and in a longer term, uh, not uh, certainly we, we have a common experience during the colonial period of uh, late, late 19th century, uh, uh, 20th century, but uh, we, we also need to look at this issue uh, in a longer, longer, uh, experiences of of our the peoples in our region in the and as also a, a part of the humanity uh, which has uh, been also uh, traveling uh, or migrating or uh, so along that line uh, we uh, cannot uh, say the self referential self self referential mode uh, or self centered uh, definition uh, systems. Uh, would not uh, suffice uh, because we, who we are, are defined by our interactions with the, the others. We, uh, in the in our case, uh, even uh, in a Buddhist a longer Buddhist history of Thailand, we also have had uh, the the visitors or the uh, pilgrimage or the uh, you know, uh, religious pilgrimage uh, across continents. And, and also it, because of the, the uh, oh, a longer, uh, uh, a few centuries away, we already had experiences with, uh, for, for example, the Catholics from, from uh, Portuguese, uh, et cetera. So, uh, uh, for France for, for that matter. So. I would say that defining ourselves uh, in, in a more uh, historical, uh, in a more uh, beyond the self-centric uh, 
uh, exist, but more in an interactive mode of we and others. And uh, even the others are not one other, but they are diverse others as well. So along that line, I can just uh, mention to you about uh, how uh, our country uh, maybe, I think the, as a country, it became recognized, uh, learning about uh, this word Asia, this kind of reference uh, in, in uh, more or less, uh, uh, not, not, uh, not many centuries away, but in a shorter. But when, when we talk about more of, of uh, pilgrimage of Buddhist monks, for example, uh, those days, with their, their, uh, the, the language of Asia uh, were, were, not, uh, uh, were much more flexible, were much more broader, were much more uh, uh, non-fixed, non, uh, uh, but more uh, you know, uh, allowing uh, interaction uh, and allowing a sense of belonging uh, in a, a not very fixed geographies. So uh, that, that, that was the, the uh, uh, issue of uh, Asia. Now, uh, just uh, my second point related to, you see, myself, I am from the northern part of Thailand. My, my mother, my father, uh, northern part meaning we are from Chiang Mai and near Chiang Mai is Lampun, which is my, my, my hometown. And my hometown, uh, looking at uh, the, the written history, it's uh, something like a hundred, a thousand uh, four or five hundred years ago, it was a kingdom. Uh, and uh, so in a country where now we have a capital called Bangkok, which Bangkok is uh, 240 years old. So in a way, uh, we have uh, the, the relationship of Lampoon at the moment as a, a small province in the north to Bangkok is uh, 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 could be looked at uh, immediate re relationship is uh, related to the central uh, government. Uh, but uh, Bangkok has its uh, subculture, its uh, standardization language. It has a center of dominance of uh, our political uh, rule uh, uh, system of the country in the last, uh, say, uh, 200 some years. Okay, so having said that, I just would like to put this in the light of, we have uh, several smaller kingdoms uh, before and later being a part of a bigger kingdom being centralized and it became one unified uh, state under the pressure of colonial uh, pressures from, from the West, England, France and uh, other related powers who also would like to uh, have this, uh, uh, you know, this region, this sub-region as a part of their empire. Certainly along that line, you can, you could imagine uh, when we use the word we in Thailand, it, it, it has many, many, many we's. Huh? It has not, not, not only one, uh, there are many we's and the many we's are, there are smaller we's, a lot of smaller we's which are, we, in a, another way, we can, so when we talk about colonialism, I just want to mention about now we, we are learning about the in, uh, internal colonialism, which also uh, were a part of a bigger question, how we get organized as a state, uh, as a one state to, to cope with the, the aggression from the, the, the more powerful states from the, the West, uh, from, from uh, the, the, the empire, uh, so to speak. So my second point is, is related to this, uh, somehow, you know, the, the issue of colonialism, the issue of, of uh, being a country uh, is also a, relate, a question it need to be put in the historical experiences. And, and this relates to, to our uh, sense of belonging and which are, are uh, not one. In a way, we belong to, uh, I can say, uh, at the moment, uh, I, I do live and work in Bangkok, but uh, uh, in a way, I also feel I am not a Bangkokian. I am uh, a, 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 
you know, a, a son of uh, a, a, you know, someone from some family from the north, and that sense uh, still uh, uh, lingers in in my in my in my mind and my feelings. But I also be, belong to to a broader sense that we live in our region not only among the Thais alone, but there are other other people who work and even in the at the moment uh, we are very diverse and uh, the the workers in Thailand there are many many uh, the say several million from from the neighboring countries and and maybe uh, some four or five mil four million are registered and some some three three or four million are not registered as so we have all this uh, in fact the interrelationship uh, interdependencies of of peoples in this sub region called Thailand and the region, because we we don't have ocean to 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 border, but we have the more or less the natural borders and where well, many ways in the um, across the river people can walk across easily and so all this kind and also culturally we are so so much uh, uh, influenced by one another. Uh, and Chiang Mai, the northern bigger capital, not northern bigger city, was say including Lampun, were something like uh, 200 or 300, uh, 200 or 300 years under uh, what we call under Burma, under Myanmar, uh, what we, I mean, in the in old kingdom period. So you see the the relationship of rule, uh, dominance, uh, and, and also interactions have been. Have become have have been very uh, dynamic in a longer view of our self understanding of of being a part of Southeast Asia, and the word Southeast Asia, uh, given by by our relationship with outsiders, uh, and the word ASEAN, for example, given with, during the Cold War, you see. So all this uh, we also have been learning how to learning about our identity is just like. Uh, onion. Uh, there are a few uh, a few circles around us that make our sense of being as as one. But in fact, we we can also look into ourselves as having our sense of belonging as a, 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 a concentric circles and and all of that. Uh, uh, deep down, we are just human. Deep down, we are just uh, you know, someone who also. Uh, Maybe in, in big question we may share some religion or we but in in, in Asia we we also do feel we have a longer view of of how we relate ourselves not only to humans but also to animals and also to other livings and also to trees and and mountains and rivers so in in our region in our longer view I think the the way we we pray we we respect nature. Uh, it has been quite different from from the very scientific view of 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 how to environment uh, as we are learning have been learning in after modernization so i just mentioned this in the last for the last part, part. uh how, how what what next uh i i feel uh we we are in this very much uh ident identification or uh, identity building uh, complex or complexes, much under the the the, the uh, state centric uh, axis, or, or very much uh, uh, oftentimes a monoracial reference, uh, not, uh, you know, in contrast to diverse. Uh, background of our roots our cultures and 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 and, and uh, ethnic, ethnicity but also our reference have been much under this very much capitalistic rule, rule. I, I i was uh, privileged to listen to uh, professor lee jong uh, uh points uh, to to put some questions how can we seek and create our i uh, our identities, our uh, unique identity, or our unique identities, uh, building uh, beyond uh, the, the 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 capitalistic 
uh, relationship of, of, of economies and or relationship with the with the with the mining or with with economies i mean with the kind of of material culture uh, that were were much impacted by by uh, how we value uh, uh, things under capitalism under uh, competition or under uh, uh, man against uh, uh, you know man consume all these things for for themselves so my my point here so how to answer this is a, as a as a challenge in question for what next i would feel may i give one example i, I just what want to highlight uh, i learned a lot about asia being asia through my my uh, student days in japan i only learned a lot uh, from from not so much from the classrooms where i learned uh, there were i had to read some very difficult books of Max Weber and Karl Marx and etc. But he, I, I learned from outside classroom where the, the struggle of environmental problems in Japan in the in the real uh, in the context where Japan have been mentioned by the whole world as Japanese miracle. So people who protest make environmental protests in Japan were not very much welcomed by people from the mainstream who think that that is not a positive image for Japan. But I think we we also, I, that's how I learned about how the uh, national identity also have been very much a challenging question for, for us as human beings. But the, those are very real questions in the context where they were uh, the most, uh, one of the most tragic uh, environmental case in Japan, even today, everyone know called uh, Minamata uh, disease. And now the whole world are learning to have about Minamata convention against the mercury pollution and against mercury uh, uses in, in production as well as even in, in cosmetics. So you see my, my uh, what next, uh, to answer what next about uh, how, how our identity could be through the people who have lived under, under very uh, sometimes not, not very kind uh, political system, some oftentimes also very much uh, uh, manipulative as well as exploitative. So in, in that sense, I think uh, the, the, the use, to use the word bottom up or to use the word uh, a human experience as uh, a, a vehicle uh, through uh, how we live in different uh, geographical uh, country areas called countries or, or beyond that uh, sub sub uh, national uh, how can we bring all this experience to be a part of our our and uh, identity building in the worlds of diversity and united by our, our sense of uh, human as being responsible for the whole very difficult environmental problems being created. How can we, how can we uh, see this as a part of our re-rooting re, uh, or re-learning back our uh, more rooted cultures where we respect rivers, we respect mountains, we, we also respect uh, our, our uh, people, in, even, even animals and, and also other livings. It is very clear that the religion in our, in our, our, our uh, that have a, a Asian roots, I mean, have, do have respect for nature and respect for, for anything uh, that we uh, live and, and being a part. So we don't de define human as above all, uh, all others, other things, other beings. So along that line, I do feel that uh, what when to answer the word "what next" also demand us to bring the concrete, concrete case of experiences to be a bridge of learning, 
uh, learning or relearning or unlearning about our own identity. May I bring to you, for example, the word, uh, uh, the commons, uh, like the Mekong River as a, a region of commons. Uh, maybe from certain aspects of national uh, laws, uh, it could be seen as uh, it, it passed through certain nations and certain part become a part under the sovereignty of that nation. But the national sovereignty uh, principle alone, if we left the commons called the International River, like Mekong, under that, we are now faced with very serious challenge because Mekong River is one, the, uh, one of the longest river in the, in the world. Uh, not the longest, but one of the longest, maybe second or third. Uh, but uh, the, the point I want to make it is that it, ha it has gone through chi partly uh, chi uh, uh, China, where it is called Lan, uh, Lansang, uh, and, and it is not recognized as international river there. It is uh, uh, managed under national sovereignty of China, People's Republic of China. But it has also gone through uh, other uh, area, uh, some part of Myanmar, some part of Laos, and uh, at the border of Thailand, uh, go through Laos, and certain part in Laos also, uh, it could also be under the understanding of national sovereignty principle of Laos. But all the whole, this river goes to the lower part meaning it goes into Cambodia and La and, and, and also uh, go to the sea, the ocean to, to Vietnam. So the lower part of the river are much uh, have been living with the river and the peoples and the fish have also lay eggs above uh, upstreams. And so to manage the river, like for, for the issue of navigation, there was once a one effort to clear the, the, the rapids in the Mekong and there were agreement with, uh, with China uh, to clear up so that we can tra transport more and more uh, and also efficiently and, and speedily and, and in terms of quantity, it also will be very helpful. And also tourism can, can grow. But uh, to make the navigation clear, uh, uh, for that purpose, the Mekong River with all the rapids, with all the ecological structures where the, the living uh, creatures, including many, many now extinct uh, or near the extinct uh, species have, have been there. So it created a lot of problems. And also the other issue about dam building in certain part of China dam building in certain part of, 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 of Laos. And this belong to the national uh, sovereignty principle. But if you uh, allow me to mention that if, from another perspective, we will take a look of this in a broader uh, international river or commons in a more general, uh, more human, humanly and ecologically meaningful way. As regional commons, the Mekong River uh, can need to be uh, understood as how we all these governments and societies in this region help to manage it meaningfully uh, so that we do not uh, destroy the river, the lives of the river. We don't destroy the species that are being distinct. We uh, do not make it only safe for navigation um, commercial navigation or tourist navigation alone, but we also make it safe for for ecological systems that are the the the, the supportive system for human societies uh, throughout this this uh, international river and and the banks and so that goes through uh, several countries and also the nearby. Uh, I I need to mention that now the the biggest uh, lake. In, in, in Cambodia called Tonle Sap has been much dried up because of uh, un, unpredictable rivers 
uh, ups and downs because of dam building, because of management for the dam for other purposes like electricity and others. So you see uh, the rivers have been exploited by human systems, which are having limited understanding of their own identities under the national sovereignty principle. And if we leave all this uh, in the hands of it, the sovereignty principle that locate it only in the national uh, sovereignty principle, the citizens are in trouble. The, the, the other uh, uh, global citizenship of, of uh, fish and, 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 and the, the other animals and, and other uh, that are, have been living in this eco ecosystem are uh, in danger. Uh, some are already extinct. So my point here is that uh, we now need to open up our discussion about the, these kind of issues, how not to allow it manage the way that create more distrust among countries, distrust and conflicts among peoples, because we also uh, put the economic reasons be beyond any other things, in competitiveness beyond other things. But uh, we don't look at our harmonious relationship between uh, ourselves together and uh, between our relationship with the, neighbor, uh, the, the, the nature, these natural systems. So I would like to end here by saying that uh, what next demand our, our, uh, our way to engage uh, the, the, the next uh, en engagement like the South South Forum like this to bring up the, how our concern for, for the, the ecological systems which are very highly uh, uh, referenced to in, for, in, like for example, in China, you talk about ecological civilization. In our other region, our country, we talk about a more, more uh, say, a harmonious relationship. Uh, in other contexts, we talk about the respect, sense of respect for, for nature and others. So along that way, we, we need to uh, talk about Asia from, from where and where to uh, uh, by, by putting the, the concrete uh, challenge issues uh, and bring the reference of the problems beyond the national framework, but to a more bottom up uh, references of livelihoods, including life of, of different uh, uh, creatures uh, being impacted by our, our way of relationship, uh, relationship building only through the national sovereignty principle. But certainly we also need to face the reality that the geopolitical forces of today has been even uh, more uh, challenged by the, the new events in, in uh, Ukraine and Russia and and also the, EU, the EU-American uh, uh, interactions over there, but uh, not to uh, allow it to be more, more uh, uh, negative than it could be. We, we need to see that geopolitical uh, issues, uh, conflicts should not be allowed to, to, to impact on the already worsened uh, geo-cultural uh, uh, and also, uh, you know, the responsibility of, of human kind to, to nature need to be uh, uh, more uh, relatively uh, put into the clear challenge together. Uh, also the states in conflict over there need to be uh, understood that limit. I know that uh, like to this year, uh, uh, Indonesia is sharing, uh, uh, so uh, you know, uh, G20 and Thailand sharing APEC leaders. So I do hope that like uh, next year, uh, China will be the chair of BRICS, for example. So how that, that kind of sharing could allow the people to people interactions and also other references for a more diverse, uh, diversified uh, and but healthy uh, referential systems among uh, our peoples and our region. So that Asia can, can, can uh, re, uh, uh, unify with its own roots, cultural roots, as well as nat natural roots, 
as well as it can also be functioning as a, a, a mutually uh, beneficial actor in a, in a difficult world of inequalities and very unsustainable uh, relationships still. So with this, uh, may I uh, say thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Sir Chai, so, because uh, you have uh, challenged uh, our understanding on the modernization, uh, especially especially in East Asia, the state has played a big, a big role in modernization process, but uh, you have challenged those kind of state-centric developmentalism and modernization and also try to see the uh, modernization process uh, on the long term uh, civilization basis uh, more, more than 500 years ago or uh, the millennium based analysis. So it is a kind of a very uh, challenging approach comparing with the East Asian uh, modern state centric uh, developmental modernization process and also the the kind of a, a new cooperation uh, with the concept of commons especially rivers and uh, mountains and uh, all those which are uh, arbitrarily uh, boundaried by the uh, state sovereignty but the uh, uh, according to people's livelihood and the people's uh, uh, narratives are related, to, are not uh, belong to th those kind of uh, state history. So their own village history, their own relationship with the, those kind of surround, eco surroundings. So it is the uh, kind of a new, uh, new conceptualization, uh, modernization to where so. Thank you for your rich intervention. So I heard from Kinchi, there are other colleagues uh, from Southeast Asia, uh, Chantana and Jomo and uh, <laughs> many others. So anybody want to support uh, Professor Su Chai's idea? No? Uh, so then, the, uh, then I will go back to our round table, round table discussion among speakers. So uh, about those kind of very touchy and uh, very urgent challenges for us to deal with. Uh, uh, I, I saw too many of ideas and the new ideas are uh, hijacked sometimes uh, and negated by the uh, the government people uh, because of uh, existing competition because of uh, the other country is like that uh, the, 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 when the when when the japanese uh, is asian co prosperity ideas uh, were challenged also by the western uh, some kind of intervention so because of because of the, the stronger uh, we should take uh, our own option rather than cooperating with the the weakers and uh, with the people so that was the always the uh, last 200 years of uh, modernization um, discourse so uh, how can we get over those kind of uh, uh, very well accepted excuses <laughs> so uh, on the government policy and the uh, ordinary people's uh, more nationalistic idealism so that was also challenging for us mm -hmm. so shall we start with the uh, muto uh, well his point is uh, very powerful and uh, no no doubt that what he said is the basis uh, for all our activities and uh, way of life and uh, culture and action and so on 
Um, so where is the need to talk about Asia? <laughs> uh, that, that question, whether we need to talk about Asia, should be related to what Achan Srichai said. Otherwise, uh, our discussion has little meaning. Uh, that's how I feel. And also, uh, in this paper, uh, I just mentioned, I haven't perused it yet. Uh, I just uh, scanned through it and uh, because that's a very big paper. But the title is In Search of the Asia Principle. Uh, that's attractive. Uh, and also, uh, uh, she introduces the idea of Fudo. Fudo is uh, a concept. Uh, it is very difficult to translate. There's no no uh, proper English uh, word uh, exactly reflecting the food. It's a it's not just climate. It's a it's a sort of a, uh, environment and uh, uh, climate and uh, uh, the people's uh, temperature or mentality. Uh, which is influenced uh, by the natural uh, and historical environment and so on. This is a sort of a concept she, she uses uh, in this paper. Um, Well, uh, how can we relate the, the kind of thing I, I mentioned <laughs> in my intervention and the, 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 the great truth uh, contained in what Sri Chai said uh, on the basis of his own experience? Uh, that's uh, uh, the, uh, the question or the question to myself, and that, that has arisen from discussion today. Well, actually, uh, I wanted to have some more uh, discussions with Muto-san, uh, mm -hmm. because I have been very much impressed by his papers, and then I have commented uh, some uh, there. Since uh, Korean, <coughs> demo, uh, Korean modernization has a uh, uh, of course, there are many uh, controversial debates, but we have learned a lot from the Japanese uh, modernizations. And uh, <coughs> of course, uh, through the time of 36 years of uh, colonial experiences, mm -hmm. but uh, many of my teachers and uh, you know, uh, the experts uh, in, in, in the time of 60s and 70s, they have been uh, trained and educated in Japan uh, during that uh, during the Japanese colonial times. And uh, they have, uh, I, I have learned from my professor that uh, the very important uh, uh, and uh, uh, spirits of modernization in the Meiji time already. And uh, of course, uh, Japan has uh, uh, learned and imitated much uh, what the West has developed, especially I think in Germany they have sent uh, uh, sent the scholars and uh, you know politicians to uh, to England or Germany to learn the way of development and modernizations. Uh, so um, I, I think uh, Japan was the first uh, Asian countries which has really successfully modernized the country, and of course it uh, gave too much power. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, military power, so it has been used the uh, wrong way. But uh, still for the internal side of Japan, I think uh, the modernization uh, was followed with also some rationalizations. 
and uh, that the liberation from 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 the uh, uh, traditional uh, feudal societies. So there are many uh, positive points of, uh, in, in in the Japanese uh, uh, early stages of modernization. But uh, uh, Mutonsan has written in your paper that there is also some negative points of modernization, uh, like uh, ruthlessness. Uh, you have said, and then uh, who who was that Takizawa or some that uh, uh, there was a point of uh, exogenous uh, uh, element in in in, in Japan. Uh, so. Um, I would like to from you uh, what what was the real real problem and point when when Japan uh, has learned from uh, West, uh, especially Western Europe, uh, and they they are parole like the quit Asia and uh, earn uh, that, that uh, join, Europe, join. yeah yeah join Europe, and and what was the negative point of this kind of policy? Uh, so, uh, what was the self-critical point in this uh, uh, point? And also, I want to hear from you. Also, you 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 are bringing the issue of the decolonization for whole of Asian people and countries. But uh, we, uh, of course, that's quite true for Korea or develop other developing countries. That uh, this uh, neo-colonialism was really a big problem which uh, uh, prevents us from the, our self-reliance and uh, uh, independent uh, economic development. But how about in Japan? I think Japan has uh, succeeded more or less very self-independent uh, economic development. And when you say of decolonization, does it fit also for the Japan? <laughs> you mean also Japan should also be freed from colonization of that uh, or are you 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 meaning decolonization main uh, mainly only for the rest of the uh, asian countries so <laughs> okay well, i th that's the point i try to make in, in the particular paper i wrote uh, ten, some 10 years ago um well, the um, decolonization uh, now is means that Japan didn't depend about what it, it did uh, from the Meiji period uh, to the to the uh, Second World War. Uh, so uh, decolonization doesn't uh, really mean uh, not merely the, the, the about the colonized people, but the colonizing people, the, the colonialist mentality, uh, the justification of uh, the, the, all the bad things, uh, the aggression, uh, murder, military uh, violence, etc., and also the taking of a whole country. This is a very serious thing, and that, that's what happened to Korea. And that was ingrained in the, uh, the, 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 the process of setting up of, of the modern nation state of Meiji. Uh, therefore, uh, for us, decolonization means that uh, one particular circumstance in which uh, uh, Japan didn't repent was that uh, the Japanese ruling groups uh, made a, a strategic decision after after defeat uh, to ally with America to to be part of American Empire uh, and American Empire rules actually the whole of Asia. Uh, except China, uh, because an unexpected uh, revolution there. <laughs> uh, therefore, the Japanese ruling groups uh, clearly 
made a decision to go with America and use the American control of Asia, as though it is it was part, part of the Japanese imperial superstructure. Uh, so, uh, and America also wanted it. Therefore, uh, we never confronted Asian other Asian people. We invaded and we did all the bad things. We didn't co confront them. No need because America is there, and we we, we hide behind America <laughs> and uh, come back uh, under the protection of anti-communism. We are anti-communist, and America uh, organizes Asia under the banner of anti-communism, communism, and therefore we are friends and and and. So that's how uh, Japan returned to, to Asia. Uh, in Bandung, even, Japan sent one representative, uh, not the official government minister. He was the one who was involved in the so-called development in Korea during the Korean time. So, uh, you see, uh, Kishi, Kishi Nobusuke, who was uh, the, the minister of uh, the Tojo cabinet, and, and he, he was the mastermind of, of the, 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 the sort of uh, uh, control and uh, uh, administration of, of Manchuria, Manchuko. Um, he went back to, to Asian countries saying that uh, we are here uh, to help you. And he scattered uh, reparation money all over Asia. This is, a, the, the, how, this is a structural aspect of how decolonization in Japan didn't take place, no need for it. So the, the Japanese people didn't really criticize that. Even uh, the left, uh, didn't that. Left said that we did a bad thing. But when the, that bad thing is concealed, grossed over, the left didn't fight, didn't fight, confront. So uh, the, all the uh, left movement or democratic movement was built on that basis. And so uh, what we confronted, uh, well, the, we meaning a sort of movement, uh, left movement from the 60s, no? late 60s, mm -hmm. second half of the 60s, is this kind of structure. And we wanted to, to, to actually uh, change it or, or, or destroy that kind of uh, mindset and system, uh, but we didn't uh, succeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, uh, that, does it uh, sort of respond to, to, to your question? So uh, I have a, a Professor Wang Ping and uh, Francis Lo want to make a comment also. So may I invite Wang Ping? Are you still there? No, actually, it was a wrong name. Oh, it wrong was name? Surichai. Oh, Surichai. <laughs> yes, that was Surichai. Okay. So then, how about the Francis Law? Do you want to say something on uh, the, about Burma? Francis Law is there? Oh, yeah, he's there. Oh, yeah, Francis Law. Mm. Yeah, I just want to, I mean, I, you know, because we're all, so many of us are from Arena. Uh -huh. I think, you know, we, we, um, we have gained so much experience from learning from one another. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, from I knew next to nothing about East Asia and all that, you know, mm-hmm. except through textbooks taught in the West and all that. But, you know, I began to encounter progressive people from China and Korea and Japan and also from India and so on and so forth. So perhaps, you know, because of this rich experience we, we had, we tend to perhaps over-exaggerate the possibility of us. <laughs> yes. I think we want to actually, as Asians, as Asians, or as East Asians or Southeast Asians, I think we, we must be very careful about that. Because I think there are so many bad lessons from our countries. So what we are talking about is actually the progressive aspects of Korean society and Japanese society and Malaysians and Indonesians. You know, perhaps Bandung, but a lot of Malaysia is bad. Don't come and learn anything from here. It will just, you know, worsen the situation. With that kind of a framework, I want to just share with you that actually. I do not see progressive Asian people collaborating, working with the Burmese revolution that's happening right now in our things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, I see only American liberal evangelical types all running all over the place. The Asians who are there, even before the coup d'etat, they were the worst of our Asians. Japanese corporations, Chinese state corporations, India corporations, even Vietnamese corporations, and of course, Thailand being next door. They were just dominating, overwhelming the the economy. Our theme today is actually modernization of East Asia. And Myanmar is the last of the countries in Asia that's getting modernized. It's actually a super rich country in terms of its resources and its manpower. Personally, in my 10 years working there, I've learned so much from the enthusiasm of the young people there. Mm. You know, they actually make you very excited about the struggle. And, uh, but I think we are not doing our job there. And, you know, actually, we must be very careful. It's not the Asian experience that we are trying to share with them. It's the progressive Asian experience. You know, and we want to actually highlight this. And uh, I mean, I just want to throw in a, a point because we should not over exaggerate this imagine, this search for an imagined commonness, la, which distinguishes us from the so called West, the colonizers, and so on and so forth. And perhaps that was appropriate in a time of the struggle for national sovereignty you know, after the Second World War, perhaps up to the 60s and 70s and all that. I think that that, that era has passed us by. I think Suri Chai's points are extremely important because I think this is a time where there's new globalization, new liberal globalization, and our struggle should be anchored actually in transcending all these kinds of, you know, these kinds of identity politics is so important in the West now. Actually, we already finished with it or we should be finished with it, you know, and our politics now is about a politics of transcending these kinds of narrow national identities, Northern Thailand identities, Southern Malaysian identities, or even religious identities, and build something that's more universal, let's come. And this is why I actually like ourselves, Arena, because we actually encourage us that. And I actually enjoy being part of SSF, you know, number nine now because it links us to what are the progressive experiences from Africa that we can learn from, or from Mexico, you know, Southern, you know, the, uh, Southern South America and so on and so forth. And, uh, and even, you know, from Professor Hudson sharing with us about, you know, the state of the American economy, and these are actually very important. And I think we shouldn't want to, you know, be drawn into debating with them about a politics of identity. I really, really think that that time has passed us by in this global, you know, IT-driven age. That's all I want to say. Just a little intervention, <laughs> yeah. you know, Thank to you. all my Fantastic. respected friends. <laughs>
Thank you, Francis. It is such a wonderful intervention based on your real engagement into Burmese uh, modernization. So uh, are there any participant questions? Are there, uh, because uh, uh, I want to make uh, Professor Sungo wrap up uh, all those kind of uh, uh, questions uh, because uh, she has uh, uh, challenged the principle of Asianists uh, with a very uh, based on very concrete intellectual history of uh, conceptualization. So is there any Chinese student uh, questions? How to promote um, the uh, people's uh, alliances or interactions uh, between uh, China, Japan, and Korea. Do you have any successful uh, examples? Uh, well, in fact, I do not think I am in a position to summarize all these complex rich questions. <laughs> I would only be able to talk about my takeaway is after listening to all of us. First of all, I support the, the concept that Mr. Moto, the question that Mr. Moto proposed. Why do we have to discuss this concept of Asia? Since it's so troublesome and it involves a lot of elements that we cannot streamline with our current tools. Why we still have to discuss this issue? I believe this is a very important reminder. Because many of our speakers have repeatedly talked about this issue, including or the intervention from more from some South Asian friends that remind us to be careful when we talk about these issues. That is because our current repertoire of knowledge, if I think this, the definition of Asia and Eastern Asia are very clearly defined. So on this very occasion today, when we talk about these two concepts again, we have to approach them from a different angle to clarify them and to find where we can go forward, the possibility to going forward, which are lacking in the past production of knowledge. And the second point is that Many of the speakers, all the speakers talk about this common paradox that we're facing. That is all of us hope for, expect, or wish for a, a transcultural, transnational connection among the peoples, the nations. But what they see more are isolation and division. And this reality would make the general public in different countries, the progressive intellectuals in all these countries, difficult to have real understanding or empathy among them. So despite the fact that the South Wales Forum is promoting this understanding and that I believe We've already have consensus over this issue on this platform. More general mutual understanding beyond this is facing a lot of difficulties today. So following this, we will have my third point. That is our common difficulty, common obstacle. But today in Asia, in East Asia, our relatively less developed country are promoting this process of modernization is actually a more or less defined way 
one that is one model that is promoted and driven by vast and developed countries. Japan offered us a lot of lessons and experiences. The Republic of Korea also has its different way of different path of development. However, these lessons and experiences cannot be applied elsewhere. Just, just then, Xiaohui raised the question on behalf of the audiences. That question posed to Mr. Muto actually reflected this kind of isolation, division, and perplexity. So how to really form these alliances among the people? It is a very relevant issue. My observation after the assassination of Abby shows that Chinese netizens know almost nothing about Japan. So under these circumstances, from my personal point of view, how do I, through my knowledge production to serve the people from different cultures to have a common understanding with each other. How can I make my own contribution in this regard? This is my own task. And for everyone present here, as all of you may engage in more important tasks than mine and even actual hands-on practices. I believe what we do, we point to the same direction, that is to build mutual understanding and respect diversity. Only by that time can we be able to transcend something the, that is the division divided in the name of national serenity, which is a reality. Only after we break through this, Breaking after breaking through these boundaries, can we have the kind of alliances that is desirable for us? Well, and as for the last point, the last question raised seems quite show some solemn side of the issue. We all want alliances among the people, but by are the people? What are they doing? What are in their minds? Well, this is actually quite difficult to interpret or explain with the term, the people. It may be a task that they need to handle in the future. So this is my very vague summary of today's session. I would like to listen to the rest of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The second question has something to do with today's theme. When we talk about modernization, we talk about how to do away with this kind of modernization that is vast oriented, that is driven by the vast model. How to do, how to begin this demodernization? This is the second question. The third question is specifically posed to the speakers from china japan and korea and then of course all of them all of you can respond how do they view the vision for international uh, the integration of eastern asia and while we inherit a legacy from the east asia history how do they settle its historical debts so this is all of the questions we want to pose you may want to respond to them through discussion. Thank you very much. I think his uh, question and suggestion is quite clear that uh, we need to cooperate each other and then mm -hmm. strengthen our mutual dialogue and then exchanges uh, uh, and, and uh, so solidarity buildings uh, to cope with that uh, difficult uh, problem of this modernization and uh, civilizations. But uh, in actuality, the, the situation looks very, uh, not, not very uh, optimistic. You know? As you all see the trend of the international politics now, uh, that even in Northeast Asia, um, 
you know, there comes some 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 sort of a, a new kind new Cold War situation is coming. Mm -hmm. So um, that uh, we are very much afraid of uh, this uh, uh, confrontation between U.S. and China uh, could uh, worsen the relationship between the. Uh, Korea, Japan, and Korea or China and uh, China, Japan, and uh, well, recently there has been some NATO conference uh, in Spain, and then why just uh, Japan and Korea? Uh, <laughs> Korean president have been invited there, and uh, so it lo looks like that uh, uh, this this. This part of the Asian countries are belonging to the European NATOs, huh? and uh, there is very, uh, very hard re response and reaction from from China. So, these concrete uh, issues and problems uh, uh, we have to solve, and for that, I think we need to strengthen uh, our uh, relationship uh, through the discussions and mutual uh, understanding and then uh, some 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 more uh, uh, discussions and uh, talks and visits uh, what uh, muto sang has proposed in his paper that uh, inter asia movement i think we, we we have to go that way to strengthen that inter asia dialogue and corporations and uh, uh, to, to build the solidarity and, and uh, the common, common, common uh, uh, efforts for, for uh, being the free from uh, the colonial rule and uh, uh, to save also our uh, civilizations uh, uh, from, from the uh, uh, very uh, dangerous collapse of uh, ecological uh, and climate uh, changes and emergencies. So, uh, well, uh, I, I, I hope that uh, this uh, 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 South South uh, Forum for Sustainability could be uh, continued and strengthened more so that we have we could have some uh, more more uh, opportunities and uh, uh, for dialogues and then mutual understandings and uh, to build the solidarity among us i think thank you thank you samuel Lee. so uh, sri chai professor sri chai is there has yes. left already no no i am here yeah yeah will you will you Will you answer for those questions uh, from Chinese uh, audience? Okay, thank you. Uh, mm. I am very happy uh, looking at the face. I did not see the faces of, of the students uh, mm. who are younger, but I am looking at uh, the faces of my esteemed <laughs> <laughs> who, who are a bit senior instead. But I, I am, I, I just think I say this, because uh, looking at each other, looking at each other in the eyes and looking at each other in person is a very important uh, human experience. Uh, I was listening to uh, Professor Sungye uh, and, and I feel uh, very much uh, already uh, uh, very uh, meaningful uh, uh, first encounter that we had now. So uh, may I answer the three que questions uh, briefly. Huh? Uh, in how to promote uh, people's alliance, any successful cases. I may I say the successful cases that we have been experiencing, it has a long long history and uh, I, am, I am a bit careful with the, 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 the warning from Francis, uh, Dr. Francis Law, 
that uh, don't exaggerate the success too much. <laughs> that means, <laughs> I mean, I mean, the way we have been engaging in this uh, arena, as well as uh, people's uh, plan uh, in the uh, people's plan for 20th century, 21st century, uh, the, the Minamata Declaration, uh, the, 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 the South South Forum. Uh, this for me has, has been very, uh, it, it has not uh, remained uh, very monolithic. Huh? It has always remained diverse in its uh, interaction with the others and, and the unknown others. I mean, I emphasize the unknown others because we are not most familiar with African or Latin America. But I think our efforts among our friends have made it that we have others and some are our friends, but some are our uh, potential uh, uh, others out of, uh, who become friends in a broader sense of, of who share the, 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 the discussion that why do we need to make alliance in this world of inequalities? Why do we need to make friends among us in the world of inequalities and which are even more unequal, increasingly unequal, unjust, but increasingly unjust too. Huh? So I think that's where the, the, the call for people's alliance are, are, are I, I think, very important. But, so the examples are this, uh, how to bring this beyond the self-exaggeration, OK? <laughs> Francis, beyond the sense of self-righteousness. That means I think we have to engage in a, in a more self-critical way, because as uh, Dr. Samuel Lee said, the world is even more difficult. So may I put it stronger in the sense that my, my, in, in responding to people's alliance, may I emphasize what I, I think uh, Muto Sang, our sensei, has been uh, uh, one of the most uh, uh, clear along this line. I think the, the autonomy Autonomy question of the people, the alliance is very crucial. If we can remain, make the, the interaction of the people and uh, the references, referential framework, not to the, you know, look at, look, look at Korean people as one thing, unified Korea, I mean, in, in terms of uh, in terms of the, the <coughs> state centric identity, looking at Japan as one, but now I think with Minamata Declaration, all this allow us to see Japan in a, a already very conflictual and very very diverse uh, sense of uh, very diverse identification that we have to think together with the Japanese or the friends who who say they are from Japan along this. So my, my, my point here is the, the autonomy of the People's Alliance in the world of very strong state-centric references, very strong, you know, singular, uh, unitary nationalism uh, against to be uh, around the world like this. And the world that we are talking about also, the, the self-referential reference of the, the state-centric regime at the UN also uh, very, very much a part of a, a, a problem as well as a part of the solution. So uh, Samuel Lee, uh, Dr. Samuel Lee and others, including the, the, the uh, assembly of the, uh, the, the indigenous peoples like the Ainu and others, uh, indigenous peoples in the world are, are, are equally uh, meaningful, or even more meaningful than state uh, stage alone. Okay, that is my first point. So, uh, we how can we bring this up in the discussion about our 
like the international rivers question how what, do we it up about the, the 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 ocean question the pollution no no, no, no. How, how to modernization beyond the beyond the, the westernization <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, this question, I think, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, the, the second question uh, is very much related to the, the binary thinking about uh, Asia and the West. Too strongly reference uh, on this. Uh, I think the world in the global South, the language of discussion in the global South today should be more helpful to liberate ourselves from the, the, the very historically specific period where we talk about Meiji restoration, the, the kind of, of very specific period in, uh, in the late 19th century and the early 20th century, which I think is very, very less, much lesson for all of us, huh? including Thailand. I, I agree that they are important, including the case example that how we send students to study from Japan. I mean, we, I use the word, the, the Thai kingdom, send the, the, the king, send, his, uh, send, send many of his sons and, uh, to, to the Western part, but to Japan only later. But my point here is talking about, uh, talking about East Asia, uh, alternative modernization uh, in the Western, in the Western reference framework, that is one, but I would like to bring this discussion in a contemporary framework, like uh, when you, when, when we discussion about the de decolonization, may I now bring my, my discussion here, you see the, the problem I, 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 I would like to bring the question of the humans have been colonizing nature, environments for their own benefits. So decolonization of today, of this contemporary period, cannot talk only about colonization experience among state-centric regimes alone. It must, without in without in inclusion of how human system relate to the nature, we, we cannot talk about Asia as we, as, we, as we have different roots of reference than, than the enlightenment in the Western context. So you see the scientific knowledge we learn from the West are very important, very, meaningful in, in many ways, but specifically speaking, it also has been a part of capitalist system. It has been a part of exploitation and it has been a part of making human forget that they are, they are dependent on, on all these living systems be around them. So my, my point here is decolonization today cannot cannot, cannot uh, exclude this question. But rather to, to I, I, I think uh, Muto-san's point is very important that about self-critical, self-scrutiny of, uh, of, of uh, peoples of one nation, self-scrutiny of people of one culture. And I would include Thailand or Bangkok, uh, Bangkok, uh, uh, dynasty, which is only these 240 years, against the relationship of Thailand, uh, Bangkok, with other, other peoples, including now we call Laos, now we call in Cambodia. So in that sense, the sense of uh, self-critical of our own history, our, our linear national history need to be uh, in parallel, simultaneous with our uh, our uh, engagement with the, the, the neighboring uh, peoples in terms of how. Uh, so my point here is that why Asia, as Muto said, ask again. Huh? Why, so why Asia? Because we are living in this, is, uh, the, in this region, in this ecology, in this 
uh, part of a very near nearby and we are affected by each other in many ways. We are dependent on each other in many ways. So if we make this uh, neighborhood sense uh, important enough to deal with it together, I think we we deserve to be say we are we can be a, uh, uh, can can do some 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 bear some responsibility. If we are not bearing this responsibility to our neighborhood, to our our nearby environments, in nature and all this, I think we are responsible. So in that sense, to be responsible to the, this area is that's called Asia because we are here around here. So I think in that sense. And historically, thousands of years, we have been impacted by each, all these things. So my point here is that if we don't, if we don't, uh, are see, not serious about our f impacting this environment, no one will will take care of this, and we cannot say we are is we are we have been responsible enough. So my point here is that uh, to un try to answer uh, why talk about Asia now in the world of this inequality of human and nature relationship is, is that important. So, so in that sense, I, 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 I am a little, uh, uh, a little uh, far away from, from the, the key question that, that uh, Dr. Semboli are engaging with, uh, with uh, uh, Muto Sang about the, the historical part. But may I say that the self, uh, the, the, the alliance among the peoples need to put in a historical context of, of historical debts as well. And along that line, I think we, we also have a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, gratitude to pay to each other, a lot of things to discuss, a lot of museums to be shared and, and not to be captured by only the state-centric logics alone. So if, as long as people's alliance belong to the autonomy principle. I mean, as long as it is sovereign, it has its own sovereignty principle, then we can be more responsible for the environment, the ocean and, and the rivers and, and, and our next generation can, can also be, be challenging our generation. So my, I just want, want to end here and thank you. I, I, I appreciate very much my opportunity to see Muto Sang, <laughs> and, and, and really uh, with with all my my uh, uh, respect and and my warmth uh, uh, words, I I pay my my uh, 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 my 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 respect to all of you, uh, Kun say and Samuli. Uh, photo session, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, before. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Professor Chai. So. Uh, before photo session, uh, because uh, I will ask Mutosa uh, to answer very briefly about uh, the the audience question. Well, uh, I think, Can uh, you do that? <laughs> I think uh, Suritai, I think Suritai uh, answered uh, on behalf of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but one thing uh, that, that is very important uh, from my own experience, uh, as well as a sort of experience of uh, people who are actually uh, doing good uh, uh, solidarity work, like uh, Ohashi Seiko. No? Mm. The point is that a hu the human being, uh, individual can change uh, when exposed to uh, different realities. Uh, and as Chan Sritya said, uh, human being. Uh, yes, everybody is a human being, but uh, uh, so much obsessed with the unhuman unhuman or inhuman uh, pressures. Uh, so uh, I think uh, one merit, one advantage of international or transborder encounter 
is that by meeting uh, other people from, from in a different circumstance, uh, the circumstance which is related to, for instance, the Japanese realities, uh, then uh, the world uh, begins to look different. Um, well, if you come to, to Yokohama today, <laughs> I live in Yokohama and uh, go to Yokohama station, uh, west side, um, it's really tiring. So many people rushing to and fro, uh, busy. Uh, great burden is there, the, the pressure is there on every human being, perhaps in, in Seoul, the same thing. No? But people do not necessarily live that way. Uh, so uh, Seiko, uh, our colleague, um, used to live in, in the Philippines in a village. Nayon village and so on. They're totally different. And she, she became mother of uh, three people who, who are not uh, from her. <laughs> so, very different setting. And uh, she invites uh, us to, to, to visit uh, the village. And people are so happy. We, we find people so happy although they are poor, uh, they are not very happy actually to their standard, but to, to the people coming from, from Tokyo or Yokohama, they look happy, so happy. So there is uh, the basis for trans-border alliance, or it's a big word, but uh, anyway, it's human relationship. So uh, the generally speaking, we, we are now in, in a very reactionary period of history, all over, very, very reactionary, uh, no hope. Uh, but under no hope situation, people live. I was a, a student, uh, I, I, the, the middle school student and the age 14, 14 years when, uh, Tokyo was bombed, and it was very, very, 100,000 people were burned to death. Uh, Americans said barbecued. <laughs> uh, yes, it's a very tragic experience, yet we managed to live and enjoyed ourselves. So many incendiary bombs, it's a sort of a bobbin. It's a sort of, of this size, uh, hundreds scattered. And it's like uh, bamboo shoots. <laughs> My school's uh, ground, uh, we found them, you see, uh, like planted. <laughs> what did we do? We plucked it up, uh, the sun was not, not exploded. <laughs> and there's a sort of a, a case at the top, which is filled with the ma magnesia or something, not burning uh, metal. We picked up, picked it up, ignited, and we enjoyed. Uh, and also, we, we had our life, lives uh, there. Even under the war situation, uh, we managed to live. No vanity, no hope for luxury. <laughs> that made us happy. A very strange experience. So uh, I think uh, human beings can, can survive uh, depending on their own, our own uh, how can I say, uh, uh, strict strength inherited from animals. We are animals too. I think uh, uh, alliance 
or something, no? but the, which uh, uh, is of course a political uh, creation. Yet uh, it's not political in the sense of state politics. It's a sort of a rela relationship, certain relation, shaping of a certain relationship. And so I think uh, uh, in spite of the fact that we are in, in a very, very reactionary world and we are unhappy, yet uh, there's a room for, for us to, to ally, to <laughs> come together and uh, find ourselves mutually as humans. And uh, so I think that is alternative development. Uh, it's not a, an economic model. It's a, it can be, and it should be an economic model, but the basis is not there. It's not a matter of economy. It's a matter of relationship, uh, human relationship. And, uh, but that is obstructed by the state barrier by the, the ambitions of the empires and by sort of a, um, a certain sort of urge uh, to put you running, to force you running. And we can't be free from, from, from that, but need, we need to find the ways uh, jointly uh, cross borders to find such a thing. And so I think uh, uh, certain uh, transborder camp, camping <laughs> of people can be planned by uh, South South Forum or anyone, uh, Arena. Oh, by Surichai in uh, Chiang Mai, uh, where we actually, the, the people's plan 21, the original idea was such a camp. <laughs> and uh, where to set up such a camp? Uh, Hokkaido people said that it should be in, in Hokkaido. And uh, Fukuoka people came uh, to park conference uh, riding a bus, eight of them came, saying that it should be Hakata in Fukuoka. So uh, we said that uh, we are at the Olympic game. And so wherever you, you want, you can set it up. But the idea is to create a space in which uh, people can just be human beings, uh, forget some overriding concern no? for some time, for three days or for one week. I think uh, uh, the basis for such space is there already. And, and you can't erase such a thing, uh, even using national sovereignty or police or anything, still you can't deprive the people of, of that right, that ability. So that's how, how I feel. I, I am not, uh, I am a pessimist in a way about uh, reading the uh, development of international situation, but uh, not pessimist, but rather optimist in, in, uh, in believing in the, in, in the ability of the people to, to live that way. That's uh, maybe the th this is the, the answer to three questions altogether. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, because, uh, because uh, I'm very sorry about the translator's burden because uh, I'm not good moderator to be, I'm not modernist, uh, moderator, so I cannot manage the time. So anyway, we have opened the paradox Pandora box filled with complicated concepts such as modernization, East Asia, from where to where, with such excellent and experienced panelist guide. 
we deconstruct and reconstruct the theme, all the remaining questions and answers are going to be opened for, for all of us and especially for you. Uh, but uh, thank you again for your active participation. I want to give my double deep thanks again to provide this precious space for our dialogue in spite of COVID barriers. We can create our own platform of encountering. Thank you for organi organization, organizers' devotion. Thank you.